make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Let he place his on the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his for he After St. Paul's third missionary journey, he got himself arrested. He got himself in a little bit of trouble. And he got in trouble because he preached about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He got in trouble because he spoke the truth. And he was put on trial by those who wanted to end his mission work, who were enemies of Christ. And so he found himself before some secular rulers he found himself before Festus and Agrippa, and he had to defend himself. Now, St. Paul was a Roman citizen, and so he could appeal to the Supreme Court of the Roman Empire. The Supreme Court back then, in that era and in that place, was Caesar Augustus himself, the emperor. While he was on trial, he defended this message of Jesus Christ. And he said that this message was not something that just came out of nowhere, but rather that there was eyewitness testimony that proved that Jesus was true God, namely the resurrection. And so at the end of his testimony, he said this, I am not insane, most excellent Festus. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to them. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me, persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice, and those sitting with them. They left the room, and while talking with one another, they said, This man is not doing anything that deserves death or punishment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. St. Paul is going to fulfill the prophecy of himself, that he is God's instrument to speak the truth before kings. And he is sent all the way to Rome, and there he would do his mission work, even though he was fettered by the chains of house arrest. Centuries later, there was a man named Constantine. He had a mother, Helena. Constantine was in a battle for the power of the Roman Empire. And in a very famous battle, it was said, we don't know if it's true or not, but it was said that he had a vision and the vision was a vision of a cross. And the words around the cross said, In this sign you will conquer. And Constantine not only won that battle, but won control over the Roman Empire and became one of the most important and influential rulers in the history, not only of the Roman Empire, but of the entire world. Now, we don't know for sure that this was the moment that Constantine was converted to Christianity, but we do know that he became a Christian. Even though he was still living in the pagan lifestyle and the pagan political climate of the Roman Empire of the 4th century, we're confident that he truly believed in Jesus Christ. And because of that, in the Edict of Milan in AD 313, 
he made Christianity a legal religion. At Before this, technically, it was illegal to spread the faith. He also helped the church and funded building projects and gave property back to the church that had been taken away during previous persecutions. His mother, Helena, uh, strongly influenced uh, him, and she had not only a strong Christian faith, but she had an interest in finding all of the, the artifacts of Christianity and trying to find the locations of Jesus' birth and his death and stuff like that, and began what we know today as kind of the pilgrimage to the Holy Land uh, to go see these holy sites. We don't know exactly what was in the heart of these two Christians, but we know that they were Christian. And even though their hearts were still dark and their theology maybe wasn't perfect, well, that's true of all of us, isn't it? But by God's grace, not only were they saved by the blood of Christ, but they were used by God to give the gospel a hearing in the Roman Empire, again unfettered, by the chains of persecution. And so we thank God for these two ancient Christians, and we thank God for our own faith, even though it is never perfect, and it is always faltering, and it is always doubting, our sinful nature is always doubting. We do know that God has taken care of us, and that God will take us not to an earthly empire or kingdom, but to an eternal one. Lord, have mercy. 
O God, you have called your servants to ventures of faith of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 